What's going on guys? Welcome back to this tutorial where we explore different methods and algorithms that allows the autonomous navigation of robots. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel, it's free and you can always unsubscribe if you don't like the content. In this video we will start coding the RRT path planning algorithm. I chose this algorithm because it is memory efficient and a lot faster than other algorithms like A star for example. They also have a lot of applications in robotics and game development. So don't forget to leave a like, share and comment on the video and let's get started. So in the last video we created an environment that allows single or multiple differential drive robots to move freely in the map, where the leader is controlled by the user through the keyboard and the followers follow the trail it leaves behind. However, True autonomous robots need to move from a point A to point B without any human intervention. This means that it needs to plan its own path and then move alongside this path until it reaches the destination. From the variety of path planning algorithms that exists, many of them are applicable to our situation, from which we mentioned the famous A star algorithm and also the D star algorithm that can be used in environments where there is moving obstacles. These are grid-based algorithms, and that means that they first discretize the world map by overlaying a grid over it, and then plan a path on that grid. This is clever, but it consumes a lot of memory space and computing time, especially in large environments, because every cell in the grid needs to be stored in the memory, even if it does not contribute to finding the solution. On the other hand, Random sampling based algorithms like the rapidly exploring random trees, aka RRT, is a cheaper solution to find a feasible path from point A to point B. One of its cons, however, is that the solution is not optimal like the one given by the A star for example, but this can be dealt with using path optimization techniques that can reduce greatly the length of the RRT path. The RRT algorithm is very simple to understand and implement. It builds a tree that origins from the start position and grows until it reaches the goal region. A tree is a type of a graph where every node have only one parent. Initially, the only node in the tree is the start node. The algorithm then generates a random sample in the map. If that sample is located in the free space and if the direct line to the closest node in the tree does not cross any obstacles, we take a step from the tree to the sample using a predefined step size and connect that node x new to our tree and we call that connection an edge. And if this operation failed, we just choose the next closest node from the tree. This goes on and on and on until the tree reaches the goal region. When the goal is connected to the tree, the algorithm terminates. Now is time for implementation. We will use the Python module Pygame to visualize our work. And if you don't have it already, you can simply install it using the command pip install pygame. So first thing first, our work will be divided in two Python files. The first one, we will call it RRC base pi, and it will contain the classes we need to do this. The other file, RRT, is actually for using the classes and methods created in the RRT base pi. In RRT base pi, we import the math pygame and the random libraries. Then we create two classes, RRT map and RRT graph. RRT map will contain methods for drawing the map, the obstacles and the actual path that was calculated. The RRT graph is the backbone of this project and it will contain methods for making obstacles adding and removing nodes and edges to the tree. And also other functionalities that checks the collision, find the nearest neighbor to a sample and some more methods we will be explaining each and every one of them in detail.
The init method in RRT map will take the start and the goal coordinates and the map dimension as well as the obstacles dimension and number as inputs and inside it we will declare these variables. The start goal and map dimension will be initialized by the values from the arguments. Also we need to split dimensions to two variables, map width and map height. These will come very handy later on. Next we declare the window name and we use set caption from Pygame to name our window. The canvas that we will be drawing on is simply created by the set method, providing the width, the height as a tuple, and we will fill it with white color to make our background. We also need some variables for drawing nodes and edges, like the radius and the thickness. Our obstacles are going to be stored inside this list. Let us now set the dimensions and the total number of obstacles and declare some colors using their RGB codes. In the RRT graph class, the init method will be receiving the same arguments as RRT map. The start coordinates are separated into X and Y. and the start and goal tuples shall be stored in these variables. Another variable is the goal flag that is set to true if the tree reaches the goal region. And also as we did in RRT map, we split the dimensions to height and width. If you are wondering how we will represent the tree we are talking about, it is very easy. In the left we have an example tree where the start is in node 0 and the goal is in node 5. In the right we have three lists, x, y, and parent. The x and y are for storing the coordinates of every node, and the parent list is for storing the parents of those nodes. The lists contain originally the start node. We see here that the parent of node 0 is node 0 itself. After this we begin adding our nodes. Node 1, its coordinates x1 and y1, and its parent is node 0. Node 2 also have node 0 as a parent, the node parent of node 3 is node 1. And we continue doing this until we reach node 5. And just like that we stored our tree inside these data structures. So back to our code, we declare empty lists x, y and parent. And as we said before, at first the only node in the tree is the start node so we will just append the x and y that we separated earlier to the x and y lists so we added the start node to the tree. The parent of the start node is the start node itself so we append the value 0 as the first element in the parent list. Because we will draw the obstacles using this class, the obstacles list along with their dimension and number are needed. And finally we declare a variable goal state that will work as a flag indicating whether the tree reached goal region or not. And also declaring a list to hold our calculated path is necessary. Since we are finished now declaring the main variables, let's begin creating some methods. We will first take care of obstacles creation. So in the RRC graph, we define make random rect that will generate a random x and y coordinates to represent the upper left corner of a rectangle and because the coordinates are integer numbers we cast them to this int and using random uniform we generate a value between 0 and map width minus obstacles dimension for the x coordinate and from 0 to map height minus obstacle dimension for the y coordinate. The dimension of the obstacle is there just to make sure our obstacle will not generate with part of it outside the map, and in the end, we return a tuple of our coordinates. This method will be used in the makeOps method that will create our obstacles and store them in a list. This list is named obs, we initialize it to an empty list at first, uh, and inside the loop, in range from 0 to the total number of obstacles, the variable, the variable rectangle is declared. 
It is for holding the obstacles temporarily before it gets stored. This variable start goal call is a flag that indicates whether our start and goal positions in the map are inside a newly created obstacle. Inside the while loop, we create a random upper corner and turn it into a full rectangle object using pygame rect. The second argument in rect is the dimension of the rectangle, and if this rectangle collides with the start and goal point, the start goal call flag will be set to true, else it is set to false and the while loop will be terminated. The loop will continue until it succeeds in creating a rectangle that does not collide with the start and goal points. If that happens, the rectangle is added to the ops list and the list will be copied to the class variable self obstacles and in the end we return the list for later use. The obstacles now are created and all that is left is to draw them so we will head back to the RRT map and define this method draw ops that takes the obstacles as input and copy them in a temporary variable. Inside the while loop, we pop the obstacle from the list and draw it in the screen using pygame draw rect, providing the surface to draw on, which in this case the created map, and the color gray, and of course our obstacle. We keep popping them until this list is empty. The last method we will define in this video is the draw map method. This method draw the start and goal as circles like we see in here. The map and the color, the coordinates and the radius are being passed as arguments. This last one is the thickness. I chose zero to draw a solid circle. For the goal I'll choose a wider radius and the thickness of one to draw an empty circle. After this we draw the obstacles as we see here. Now it's time to test what was done so far, so we head to the other file RRT and import our classes from the other file plus the pygame module, and inside main we initialize our variables pygame and our classes. Then we make the obstacles and draw the map. To see the drawn objects, we update the display. And to make sure the window ju don't just disappear, we clear the event queue and wait for a new event to happen. This will freeze the window until we tap a key on the keyboard or move the mouse. And underneath, we make sure to write this if condition and call the main function from it and our work is done. The result is as we expected. Start node, goal region and randomly generated obstacles in a white background. So this is it for this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and share the video with your friends. And goodbye until the next video.